Hey guys, this episode we're painting my curry rear end with Cerakote. I've never done it before, so this should be interesting. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today is part four of our curry swap into my 1969 Pontiac GTO, and it has been an endeavor. Now, if you missed it, go check out part one. We pulled the 10 bolt, almost became a disaster, but last episode, we welded in new tabs for brake lines and we're done welding, we can paint now. And as I said in the intro, we're using Cerakote and it is my first time using it, but have no fear, I have a ton of experience with HVLP guns because I even painted my car in my home garage. And that was terrifying. <laughs> it came out okay though for my first time. And if you're new here, that's the whole premise of my channel. I do a lot of things for the first time so you can learn from my mistakes. Subscribe if you haven't, and if I've helped you out in the past, consider hitting that join button or buying some hats. All proceeds go into buying more parts so I can make more mistakes and you guys can learn faster. <laughs> now, moving forward, why did I pick Cerakote? Cerakote, if you don't know, go to their website. They are known for the ceramic-based paints and they have basically four different types of coatings. This one in particular is their air dry. All the rest of them require oven curing. Can you imagine trying to fit this thing in my, in my oven at home? Yeah, not gonna happen. <laughs> so that's why I picked their C-Series. And interestingly enough, one of their C-Series products called Glacier Black is rated up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can use that to paint your headers at home with what I'm gonna show you today. So stay tuned, we're gonna go through all of that. Now, having said that, there are some things we need to experiment with before we actually lay some product down. And we're gonna go through my knowledge on that procedure. So let's get into what is needed and required to get this laid down. Here is everything you need to be successful. Starting with safety gear, I love these portable respirators, not portable disposable respirators. I use it like three times and throw them away, buy a new one. Uh, safety glasses, gloves, mandatory, especially after you clean your parts. Masking tape, even this butcher paper for uh, testing your spray pattern. Acetone for cleaning, cleaning your gun, cleaning your parts. A bottle to hold your acetone in is actually super handy because you can squirt it on everything. Uh, obviously your material. And when you look at your material, the bottom of the bottle says what strainer to get. And these really cool drop-in strainers go right in the cup and you can pour from the bottle into the cup. Mixing is not mandatory but if you're going to combine colors like I'm going to do later on the rear end clear with graphite black um, I'm going to mix it in here. This is a really cool headband I wear it's for a lighting while I'm painting but the most important thing here guys is the gun. So this is the professional Iwata mini gun. The difference between a mini gun and a standard gun is basically the end cap. See that size there? So the blue gun will put out a 12 inch wide fan pattern. This one will do a three inch wide and you can go smaller and we'll do that later. But this is such a beautiful piece of hardware. It's around $300. What I recommend is do not buy this on eBay and do not buy it on Amazon because there's a huge counterfeit market for, for these. Go to uh, Cerakote or a very well-known paint distributor that sells them because then they'll honor the warranty. That's why I got this from Cerakote Direct. This guy here, this little pressure regulator, I got from Summit Racing. It's also an Iwata, uh, but this is how we're going to control my incoming air pressure. This is not mandatory because you could also use the filter dryer on your air compressor. Like I have a bigger one that's set at 80. This one is going to be set at 30 and that's per uh, the material you pick from Cerakote. It ranges from 20 to 30. Then I added a little swivel for my air hose. So we have to talk. It's not me, it's you. <laughs> I say that because some of you are going to skip this step and wondering why the Cerakote doesn't work or your paint doesn't work. It's because this surface needs to be oil and grease free and it has to be etched before you put Cerakote on. Now when you paint anything, I don't care what it is, there has to be no oil, grease, fingerprints, 
debris on that surface for paint to stick. And more importantly, it has to be etched if it's metal. So that's why you've heard the term self-etching primer, that you apply it directly to metal, then the paint applies to the primer. That's kind of like the glue. But Cerakote doesn't need primer. It has to be etched. So per Cerakote, you have to media blast this with 100 grit aluminum oxide. Be after you clean it, it has to be fully cleaned. And for cleaner, you can use the acetone I just showed you. You can even get like a wax and grease remover. I use that a lot from House of Color and I put it in a vessel like this where I can pressurize it and spray it so I can spray everything, clean it all off. You can also soak in acetone. It's the most preferred method for smaller parts. Obviously this thing is huge. And that's where we come to my problem. Finding someone to media blast this with the correct grit is difficult and I wish it was easier, but it's not. So I have to rely on my experience to do an experiment and I, what I'm going to choose to do is do what's called a chemical etch. So POR15 actually makes a product, I've used this in the past, that has uh, phosphoric acid and zinc phosphate. You soak the metal and it etches the metal and also leaves a zinc coating so it doesn't oxidize. I am going to try that on a couple pieces of steel, like this big. These I use for practice welding with. So I'm going to do, uh, I have two. One of them I'm going to soak 30 minutes as per instructions with the, um, the acid, get it etched. The other one, I'm going to mimic the 100 grit oxide on one side and then leave it bare, do nothing on the other, and we'll see what it looks like. So let me get these things prepped and let's start shooting. All right, team, here we go. Here's the acid etched one. I know it's tough to tell, but I put holes in both samples where one sample I dimpled. So this is the surface I mimicked the sandblasting by using red scotch bright. You can see it over there. And the other side, no treatment. So the holes are for hanging while we spray. Now, let's talk about the gun real quick. There are three adjustments on this bad boy. This bottom one is air pressure. That's wide open because we're using this or a pressure reg regulator. We have a fluid adjustment knob and a fan adjustment. So on the fan adjustment, you wanna do start with one turn out. So I'm already all the way in. I'm gonna use the one right here as my marker. I'm just gonna go one turn out like that. And then on a fluid, you're gonna do two turns. So one, two, just like that. And we can adjust from there. So now we get to fill it up. I'm just using gra graphite black today. I am not doing the mix trick yet. So this is just testing, but you need to shake this for like five minutes. So I've already kind of done that. Put our strainer in. It smells wonderful, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. That should be enough. I love that strainer because it's catching the bubbles. Just in case you aerate the fluid going in the gun. And I'm going to set that aside in my cleaning tray. Put my cap on. Let's go paint. Welcome to my paint booth. Just kidding, it's my backyard on the fence. Uh, when we paint the axle, I'll show you the real paint booth. But what we're doing here is all guns have a two-stage trigger. So if you do just a little bit, just air comes out. If you do a full pull, paint comes out. <laughs> so when we do a half pull is when we want to adjust our pressure. So I need 30. And you can see how it changes. So 30 is right there. And that's how you set the pressure. So let's get apart. Oh, actually, no, now we need to, sorry. Now we need to adjust for pattern. So three to five inches away. That looks pretty good. Now you notice it's a vertical pattern. You can actually change it by changing the tip. So if you unscrew the tip, pivot this front, front end vertical and tighten it back down like so and we get a wider so we can adjust our fan and you can see how it changes 
fun stuff. So let's start shooting. All right, a little too much on that first one because uh, I made some adjustments. See how the second one goes. Oh, much better. So it should look nice and wet, just like that. So I'm gonna give it about five minutes and then do one more coat. Here we go. It's actually a week later. And uh, just so you guys know, this dries to the touch at about an hour, hour and a half, two hour dry time, but it doesn't fully cure for five days. So it's been a week and it's really tough to tell any difference here. So that's kind of interesting, but it looks fantastic. I mean, I have to admit, even on the part, on the first one I sprayed where it came out kind of weird, it's because I was putting on too thick. And at one point I was too far away. So it left little dots. It's tough to see here, but you might have seen it when I sprayed it. And then the second piece, which has, remember, the etch side here and then nothing done on this side. It came out super smooth. Like, I love it. This is two coats. So this is really promising. Now, how do we test this <laughs> is the next question. And one of you guys, ironically, just sent me a note on Instagram saying to check out a video by Repair Geek where he, he tested a whole bunch of different products like POR15 and stuff. And what he did is he put, he put etch lines with a razor and then he put duct tape on it, pulled it off to see if it adheres to the, me the metal. So I'm gonna do that just to, for kicks and giggles and see which one is the best. Time to rip off some band-aids. Ironically, I have the perfect width duct tape in my possession. I'm just gonna tear them all off and then we'll examine it. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Look at that perfect right where I put the etches. That was chemical. All right, so this one is no treatment. I got a little bit of peel away there. This is where I hit it with a scotch bright, which looks really good, frankly. Our chemical one. Not much changed. Obviously the chipping from scoring it, again, might attribute to the thickness. There's a little peel away there. I'm trying to scratch it off. It's not peeling off. So that's a good sign. That's fantastic. Now I gotta think about what to do. Now the hardest thing about paint is cleaning before paint. So I already degreased everything. Now, like I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and etch it with uh, Scotch-Brite everywhere. I even have a Scotch-Brite wheel on my die grinder. So that will come in handy. And let me show you what it looks like before and after. So before, there's gonna be a coating on any steel you get that's raw. It's either gonna be a rust pre preventative or it's gonna be um, from work hardening and all that stuff. It, you don't know what happens on the top of steel. So it's always a good idea to at least break a layer. Let me show you. I see that difference. Yeah, it's dirty too, so wear your gloves. And uh, yep, about an hour and a half of work here, two hours. I'll show you the results. Wow, <laughs> I'm like 95% of the way there, but you can see how beautiful it looks. I am so tempted to clear coat it because yes, Cerakote has clear, um, but we're gonna stick to our plan and I'm gonna continue uh, with the hard spots and degrease again because there's a whole bunch of dust left over and you never know what kind of oil your air tool spit out. So I'm gonna degrease again and then I'm gonna use the acid. And this is kind of why I think it's a good idea because there are some spots that are physically impossible to reach. You can see one right here. I can't get in there very well. So the beauty of the acid is it will etch those areas. And by the way, that word I was looking for earlier is scale. There is a layer of scale um, off of steel when it's produced and it's always best to try and get through that. No worries if you can't, you definitely have to etch it. So next step, I'm going to acid it 
and let it dry and it will change the color, but it also prevent rust in between steps. I told you the color would change. <laughs> I love the POR15 acid because per the instructions, you let it sit for half hour, you keep it wet the whole time. So I was just sitting there with a sponge, keeping it wet, and then you rinse it off with water. 24 hours later, which is right now, it's dry, but it, some of the areas leave a film on there, which, guess what? You clean again. <laughs> so you can actually use a white, ra um, I'm sorry, a wet rag and wipe it down, let it dry again. But I prefer the method of using my wax and grease remover again to get all that powder off. Oh, you can't see it on my hand, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Be right back. All right, I'm almost done, but basically you keep cleaning until your rag turns up perfectly white everywhere. Nooks and crannies, so it takes a while, but I am there. Next step is I gotta figure out how to fixture this thing. Like, how am I gonna paint it? You know, oh my God, I gotta think about this. I think I have a crazy idea. I wanna stand this on end so it's upright. That way, at least one side would be shielded because I do not want to paint inside this machine bore. Less masking. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, I think that might work. It's a two by six. I bolted the bottom. Let's stand it up. Oh yeah, I think, it's, I think this will work. I mean, I really would have to fall over into it to knock it over. It definitely won't go this way. I think I like it and I can, I have room to shoot. I can go all the way around it. Granted, I have to work on my squats, but I think this will work. Next step, let's mask it. There we go, all masked up. Uh, as you can tell, I covered the major surfaces. Uh, the most important surfaces to cover are threads, internal and external, especially if they're precision and any machined bores. So the bores that we're using for the upper ar uh, control arms and the end bores for the bearings. That's the most important parts to cover and don't be afraid to degrease it again. I put all the masking tape on with gloves on. So I didn't apply any oils from my fingertips accidentally. And I know I promised you uh, to show you my paint booth. Paint booth, <laughs> awesome. I've done a video on this already, so go check out the link or the link below. I'll leave it there. I swear it's under $5 and then you throw it away. Let me give you a tour. There it is. The one change I made since doing the last video on the booth is adding butcher paper because when the paint sticks to the plastic and the plastic's on the ground, the plastic sticks to your shoes and it makes a mess. So there it is, floor to ceiling. It's awesome. It does, it also serves as a super cheap uh, car cover. So I'll keep that in mind. Anyway, let's get to mix and paint and start shooting this bad boy. I mentioned earlier, we're going to mix the clear with the black. I got this trick from David at Cerakote SoCal. So thanks David. We're going to give it a shot. He says it gives a perfect luster to the black to make it look like the perfect matte black, which I want to use on other parts. I'm okay with experimenting on the rear end. So the trick is you guys got to get a cup like this. Now Cerakote recommends doing this by mass on a scale in a glass vial. I don't have that stuff. I'm doing it my way. Okay. So there is a way to do 20%, which is what David recommends. So four plus one is five. One is 20% of five. So I think I'm going to need about a half a quart of material. So I'm going to pour black up to five and then the clear up to that five. That's how you do it. If you guys want a killer margarita recipe, use this one. Four parts tequila, two parts lime juice, one part agave nectar. And if you want to really stun your woman, put another one part Grand Marnier. And this is how you make it party size. I have a gallon version of this. I guarantee it. You're going to like it. Leave a comment. Anyway, I'm gonna get to work. So I'm gonna mix the two and put it in the gun back there and step in the booth. I need to show you how to paint detail areas. You guys remember last time we talked about the fan pattern. 
If you want to paint a detailed surface, you want to have like a almost like a dot coming out of the gun. So I, I'm fully closed. I'm just going to open like one turn and one turn and see what happens. A little too much. Uh, I like that. Now we can do the detail spots. So what I'm referring to is like these corners, like you can't get a fan pattern in there to get those appropriately. So you just go around, just like that, all the way around, take your time, but hurry up. <laughs> and then after you do that, change to the wide pattern and do the big areas. Okay, time for wide pattern. Oh my God, <laughs> how do you like those apples? Yeah, I love them very much. I mean, look at this thing. It is completely badass. It is super smooth, like to the touch, like, oh my God. Not like I touch baby's butts very often, but it's pretty close to baby butt. <laughs> it's been um, about two hours actually since the last coat. I did three wet coats. Uh, you guys saw how I was putting it on. Zero runs and only one mistake. And that's on the end here where I hit it with the hose. This is the end that was uh, on, on the piece of wood and I clearly hit it with the hose. Oh well, big deal. Now, next thing I wanna try is they have these uh, paint pens that they uh, have on Cerakote where you can actually do fine detail work in, in engraving. I'm gonna try that now on the Curry logo. I wanna put white in there. I wanna see if I can outline it uh, or at least get it in there, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It doesn't matter if I screw it up because you really can't see this under the car, <laughs> at least that I know of. And uh, let's have some fun. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> uh, this is three coats. I waited about an hour in between each coat and the capillary action out of that pen also applies to plates. So this is a welded on plate and you can see it crept underneath and left that little white border. Kind of cool looking. And no one's gonna see it because it'll be under the car, except you guys that got this far in the video, which is like seven of you. <laughs> I hope you guys learned a lot today, especially the low cost paint booth. Oh, big takeaway. I forgot to tell you guys, the respirator I was using, I went through two of them. I should have used three, one per coat. I was gagging at the end of the second coat, so I should have thrown it away prior. And granted, this is a pretty big part and there's a lot of overspray. So on smaller parts, you could probably get away with one respirator for all three coats. But yeah, this is a lot of overspray, the stinkiest paint I've ever used, crazy. So. It was fun, it came out great. I, it's exceeded my expectations. I can't wait to do more parts, get me more ideas here. And uh, yeah, so next episode, final assembly and install into the GOAT. So I can't wait. If I've ever helped you out in the past, consider joining that full Monty Club. Don't worry, I do keep my clothes on. And until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya. <laughs>